electromagnetic spheres. The following day you, you turn it on, now you might have started in a different place, but it will become attracted to this attractor and go around and around and around and around. So, a periodic attractor, which is a topological singularity, can become a metric object, a radio transmitter. Uh, now, for, for the first time, I'm going to bring here a human body. I'm not even going to put the head. That's supposed to be a human body. I'm going to leave the sex unspecified, however much I want to throw something there. <laughs> In the human body, we have several cyclic processes. The sleep and awake cycle, for instance. You know, you, you go to sleep every night, your, your body forces you to enter into a state, which is a state of being asleep. Then you wake up in the morning and you are in the state of being awake. Then you go back at night and, and, and sleep. That's a cycle, right? You're, 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 it's a rhythmic cycle that lasts roughly 24 hours. You can be completely get out of whack if you travel from the, um, the United States to Europe and you get jet lag. That is your internal cycle, not knowing where the sun is supposed to be and therefore not knowing when it's supposed to start and, and end again. But nevertheless, we have daily cycles. Those cycles are produced by chemical reactions, hormonal chemical reactions in your body that eventually end up in your brain. We also have monthly cycles, like the menstrual cycle. There are also yearly cycles. The human body is filled with cycles that are very precise. Every single day you go to sleep, you awake. Every single month you have your period. Every single year there are cycles of temperature and pressure that come back to the same point. Those cycles, when they have been studied with phase space, that is when you identify their degrees of freedom, which now are number of chemical reactions that, of, that take place and a concentration of the hormones that are needed for, say, the menstrual cycle to begin, those would be the degrees of freedom. We have already, we already know that they are also kept stable by a periodic attractor. That's why they are so reliable. That's why they are so automatic. Something that has a periodic attractor bounces back and forth between two states in a very predict predictable way. You can try to postpone it by drinking tons of coffee, like those kids in the Freddy the Nightmare, you know, Freddy Krueger movies that they don't want to go to sleep because Freddy's going to with the, with the, with the, with the, 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 the knives and the, the fingers and the, the blood. So they try to stay awake, but eventually it catches you, right? Eventually, seven days later, you have to fall asleep because your attractor is there. And attractors are totally deterministic. They are forcing you to be there. So again, we have a topological entity, a line closed into a loop, which is a pattern of becoming, a pattern of becoming that is cyclic, but that can be incarnated or realized into a whole variety of actual systems that don't look at all like each other. Radio transmitters don't look at all like human bodies that go to sleep and awake, or like animal bodies. The same thing here. In other words, there's no resemblance between the essence, if you want to call it that, and the actual things that actualize the essence. This is, this is the sophisticated way, I'm not going to stop right here. This is the sophisticated way of, study, sophisticated way of studying immanent patterns of becoming. They can get even more, I'm just going to write one more. It's called chaotic attractors. These are the newest addition. And they are beautiful. Once you get to a Wi-Fi place where you can use your computers, is this Wi-Fi place? Is this a so if, if anyone has a computer, if you can please type Lawrence Attractor in your Google window, choose images from your Google menu, so you can see why a chaotic attractor is a beautiful, beautiful shape that looks something like that. And that it really has an aesthetic of its own. Chaotic attractors are 
It's beautiful. That's why I would like somebody to actually bring some chaotic attractors to the screen. It's not necessary because I don't want to wow with you now, but whenever you get a chance, do look at them and see how magical and beautiful they are. Yeah. So is that uh, turbulence? Chaotic attractors stand for turbulence. That's correct. Remember yesterday we saw that there were three regimes of flow, uniform or steady flow, wavy flow, and turbulent flow. Exactly. Thank you. In fact, those three <laughs> they show up. Three days. <laughs> yeah, liquids that flow is steady have a point attractor. Because a point attractor doesn't have to be fixed. It can be anything that doesn't change. Anything that's steady. It's a steady state attractor. Then, then those circulatory patterns that we talked about yesterday, the monsoon, the trade winds, or the lava flows that also go round and round, bringing plate tectonics, you know, and continents to clash with one another, are also represented by periodic attractors. And yes, once the intensity gets high enough and things get turbulent and vortice, this is the kind of attractors that are producing those vortices against vortices. They are fractal. They're called chaotic because some idiot thought that that was a cool word. They are anything but chaotic. That's why I want you to watch them in your in your in your. Is that, um, is that what happens when you put a magnet in underneath the pendulum, and the pendulum no longer goes from side to side? You go and it starts along exactly. There was a little toy, in fact, that they used to sell you. Yeah. That the moment if you had only two magnets, mm -hmm. it you went into that. Yeah. But the moment you put the third magnet, and that's why Poincaré discovered this when he studied a three-body problem. The moment you put three magnets. The pendulum starts going like that, almost if he was alive, right? So chaotic attractors were discovered in the 1960s, studying precisely turbulence in the atmosphere. But now they have been discovered in a whole variety of ways. They are extremely good looking, just an aesthetic, from an aesthetic point of view. That's what, you know, when, when, when you get to your laptops, connect, and just look, you can put your Google in images, and, and say, put Lawrence Attractor and look at the Lawrence Attractor. You want to tell me if it's not a beauty. And what, what bothers me is to call them chaotic. Why chaotic? They should be called fractal attractors. Or, oh, they are also called strange attractors. Because they are strangely attractive. Like, <laughs> yes? If you can uh, use the example of a cup of tea also, which is strangely attractive. Oh, when you pour the milk? And you see the world and the turbulence. It's absolutely. absolutely. You, particular, particular if you stir it before you pour the tea, so now you have a dynamic going, and then you pour the cream, and, and the foldings and stretchings that... that